Welcome back, this is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here. We're doing mathematical modeling. Chapter 2 is discrete time models. Section 2.4 is going to be difference equations at equilibrium. And this lecture, what we're going to do is last lecture, we looked at cobweb diagrams and the intuitive idea of what equilibriums are and the stability of equilibriums. This time what we're going to do is give the rigorous mathematical definition of stable and unstable equilibrium points for first order autonomous difference equations. This is essentially stable. This is going to be the definition of unstable graphically. Let's get to it. All right, so our first definition, we ha I have three definitions. Basically, they're all related to each other, but the first one is going to be stable and unstable. Then we're going to get attracting, and then we're going to get asymptotically stable, which is both stable and attracting. So the first one is going to be an equilibrium x star of the difference equation xt plus 1 equals f of xt, regardless of whether this is linear or nonlinear now. We really want one a nonlinear because that's what nature is probably going to throw at us. We don't have a systematic way of finding the closed form. So we have to get it a different way and different conditions of telling us when we have equilibria and stability of equilibria over long term. What is that telling us specifically? Also crash course, we have to universally quantify predicates now. So upside down A is for all and backwards E is there exists. This is the universal and existential quantifiers or predicates. What that tells us is an equilibrium is stable if for every real number epsilon greater than zero, there exists some other delta greater than zero, such that as long as I can get the distance between x, my starting point x zero and that equilibrium to be within uh, distance of de delta, then for all time t, the xt values and the equilibrium are going to be less than epsilon. Pictorially, what that's going to say is, as long as I start within the interval x star plus delta, x star minus delta, as long as my starting point x zero is in that interval, close enough to my equilibrium, then all of the values over time are going to be within this interval within an epsilon distance of the equilibrium. This is what we mean by stable. It's going to stay relatively close. It might even oscillate back and forth, up and down, but it's going to, over time, stay closer to it. And then, of course, I'm assuming you've seen some kind of predications or some logic course, because now how do I negate this statement? Lazily, in most books, they'll say otherwise, just that. Otherwise, it's called unstable. <laughs> but what does that mean? You're unstable if you're the negation of this statement. So I negate this statement, and we get that you're unstable if there exists an epsilon greater than zero, such that regardless of how close I get my initial condition to the equilibrium. Oh, now you see that wouldn't have done it. In the video, he, was in the, he has to be, this is x star and he has to be within an epsilon or a delta net of him. So now that I've got the picture right, regardless of how close I start to that guy, there will be values, there will exist times t where the distance between xt and the equilibrium is larger than epsilon, so they'll be stuck outside. And these, the ones I circled in orange are the bad guys. So regardless now, you're unstable if, regardless of how close I start to the equilibrium, over time, there's values that will get larger and larger away from the equilibrium. That's unstable. Let's do the next definition. All right, now an equilibrium x star of this equa difference equation is called attracting if there is some eta greater than zero such that if the distance between x zero and our equilibrium x star is within a distance eta, then that implies, in fact, that the limit of our xt's is, in fact, our equilibrium x star. So it actually is converging there. And it's going to be called if eta is in fact infinity, so if anytime this is less than infinity, which is always, it's going to be called a global attractor. Graphically, again, means that if I have some eta, in this case, it's probably a global attractor because it didn't matter how far away I was, but regardless of where the x star is starting, or if I do it x0, 1, starting above x, my equilibrium, it's still going to converge to, or the limit of the sequence will be uh, x star. And if I started at some other point, x0, 2, then it would still end up converging to, but from below this time possibly, but either way, it will always converge to, or the limit of the xt will in fact be x star. And finally, what we're going to call asymptotically stable is going to be if it's both stable and attracting. And if that's attracting, if it's a global attractor, we're going to call it globally asymptotically stable, or GAS, G-A-S. Globally asymptotically stable means that it's stable and it's globally attracting. Let's do an example. 
All right, to finish off, we're going to consider an example of xt plus 1 equals axt plus b, where we have an initial condition x0 is alpha. This is a linear constant coefficient one, non-homogeneous essentially. And we have an explicit closed form solution for this. And so we can use this example to help analyze the definition of stable and unstable for equilibrium. This is the unique equilibrium of this system. If you look at that, go to the previous video and I derive this. Then what we want to do is look at a bunch of different cases for A and consider whether we have stable or unstable in this definition. If we look first of all in case 1 as A equals negative 1, then I can put that into here because I have the closed form and I explicitly get a closed form solution like this. And I notice that when I start calculating values because I have the explicit closed form, I see that if the timestamp is even, then I just get the initial condition alpha. If the timestamp is odd, then I get negative alpha plus beta. But the point being is, all it's doing is oscillating between two values, alpha and negative alpha plus beta. So even pictorially from the definition or using this epsilon definition, we have that this is a stable equilibrium. And from the cobweb diagram, we also see that it's just going to oscillate. These are the two values that's allowed to obtain alpha and negative alpha plus B. I don't know why it became beta. That should be a B. But basically it's just oscillating around there, but it's not getting closer and closer and closer. It's not converging towards there. So it's an equilibrium which is stable, but it's not attracting. If we go to the next case where A is larger than negative 1, but still less than 0, so a negative number, but a fraction which is less, its absolute value is less than 1, then what we see is, again, I can get an explicit closed form for the solution. But now if you focus on this guy, this is a number which is between negative 1 and 0. So if I take starting, think of negative 1 half. Then if I take negative 1 half squared, I'm going to get 1 quarter. Then negative 1 half cubed is negative 1 eighth. So it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So what that tells me is the limit, this is going to go to 0, and the limit of xt's is in fact my equilibrium, b over 1 minus a. So not only is this now stable, it's also attracting. So this tells us that x star in this case is stable and attracting, therefore it is asymptotically stable. And you can see from the cobweb diagram now, it just doesn't go around in a nice square around the equilibrium. It oscillates around the equilibrium, but it gets closer and closer because it's converging to that value. Here in our last case, we're going to consider if a is strictly less than negative 1 now, then if we start calculating, because again, I have this, I didn't put it in here because I didn't have enough room. I want to draw my nice cobweb diagram. But if you start calculating these values again, pick negative 3 over 2. It's less than this guy. So pick an A value so you can see. Negative 3 over 2 squared is going to give me 9 over 4. It's going to get larger and larger, but then it's going to flip back and forth. It's going to be positive or negative depending on the T. And so it's going to oscillate around the equilibrium still but it's going to grow and the values are going to get larger and larger over time. So this is definitely an unstable equilibrium. And of course, from the cobweb diagram, you can see that it's going to oscillate around it, but it's getting larger, not converging towards the equilibrium like we want. Luckily, this is probably one of the last times you'll see it unless I force you to in one of my classes to use the definition. But in the next video, what we're going to do explicitly is give ourselves three theorems for which are going to be conditions for when we have stable and unstable equilibria. Please subscribe right here. I'll see you next time.